Hello everyone, uh, I'm Junli Kai. I'm currently a PhD student at Virginia Tech. My advisor uh, is Chris Mowen. Today I'm going to introduce you um, how to use Buckling Cracker. So Buckling Cracker is a, is a software that um, we developed at Virginia Tech. So um, it can decompose uh, your Buckling solution from AppCurse or any other software that you use and um, tell you the model amplitude uh, along the member and uh, model participation factor um, so um, it's pretty neat because um, in standards we uh, the capacity of a member is linked with with its um, global distortional and local buckling uh, loads so uh, if if you want to use uh, Abacus to find uh, those loads you need to decide for this uh, for example for this problem you need to decide uh, whether you should use it as a distortional uh, bucking load or a local bucking load uh, by doing model identification you can uh, easily do that and um, of course there are other applications uh, of model identification but uh, first let me introduce you uh, how to how to uh, use it uh, the first thing that you should do is to download it at this address. Uh, it's tinyurl.com slash bucklingcracker. And um, when you uh, download it, it's, it's compressed. And uh, you need to um, uh, decompress it. And then uh, you can s simply open um, MATLAB. And change change the folder to uh, wherever you saved uh, you saved the buckling cracker. Here I need a while to find it. Oh, here here it is. And then you can just uh, type in buckling cracker, buckling, sorry. Cracker. And the software will uh, pop up, and uh, there's a preloaded example in it, which is, uh, I think, very nice. And you can just do nothing and best but just hit run <coughs> and the software will anal analysis this uh, preloaded example and uh, and you can play with it um, but if you want to um, analysis your your own problem he here is how to do it First, uh, you need to d decide um, the geometry of your cross section and uh, the material properties. And um, in the first in the first uh, box um, in the software, you put in uh, material properties like Young's modulus and uh, Poisson's ratio. And in the second box, you can put in uh, the coordinate of uh, natural nodes. So natural nodes is a term in uh, generalized beam theory. Um, it means that the turning point of your cross section um, center line. Uh, for example, in this problem, is the node here, here, uh, here, 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 and here, right? And I put in uh, the coordinates of those nodes. Um, um, the 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 third box is the information of the uh, of the walls or uh, segments of your cross section. Um, so for this cross section, there are um, one, two, three, four, five. There are five uh, walls, and um, the first wall is linked, is formed by linking uh, node one and two, and the material is the of this wall is the first material. So you put one here. And it has only one uh, intermediate nose, so you should put one here. And in the software uh, of this version's bucking uh, cracker, it's assumed that you evenly 
uh, mesh is whole, which means um, all of these sub-segments of um, each whole uh, should be having the same length. Uh, and the, uh, the thickness uh, of the whole uh, that you are um, considering um, so the thickness of the first wall is two millimeters. So just put put two here. Uh, in this box, you put in a number of cross sections, which means how many cross sectional cuts you have uh, in your uh, finite element mesh. In this problem, um, uh, the column's length is um, one, two, four, zero millimeters. Uh, I measured it every ten millimeters. So there are uh, 125 uh, cross sections. Um, here in this box uh, is uh, finite element base state fire, uh, which means uh, the coordinates that's that you created your model before any analysis. Like uh, here, I've shown uh, the fire of all the coordinates. Um, remember to include uh, the nodal, uh, the nodal um, numbering of your model, and and uh, the coordinates does not to be uh, in a particular uh, order, and um, you can have a little bit uh, of error of. Uh, the coordinate you actually want to create, for example, it should be uh, zero here, but that that's fine. The software can uh, handle that. And um, here is a finite element displacement fire, which means um, um, after your analysis, you should have a displacement um, field of all the points, um, and you can output that file from uh, Abacus and save it somewhere and uh, tell the, s the software you where you uh, saved it. And um, there are two things that I want to mention. Uh, one thing is um, before um, these uh, numbers, in, in for example, in Abacus, there are originally some nonsense like uh, uh, the time you analysis uh, um, the problem and something like uh, collapse time, some nonsense there, just delete it. Remember to delete uh, the title from uh, Abacus. And another thing is that in Buckling Cracker, the longitudinal direction has to be Y direction which means uh, the displacement or the coordinates has to be um, in the second column uh, which also means if you did not create your model in that way you should edit uh, your result file so that um, the second column is the longitudinal direction after you did all this uh, and you can hit run And after uh, a little, a little while, um, the uh, um, buckling cracker will tell you um, the cross-sectional um, buckling modes. Uh, for example, for this um, problem, uh, first mode is uh, uniform compression or tension. Second mode is bending and bending also for third and uh, twisting uh, and distortional uh, mode, uh, distortional uh, mode also and um, a local modes, local modes, local modes. Um, also, um, the software will tell you uh, um, uh, the model amplitude uh, along the member in this plot, uh, like in this problem. Um, let us go back to uh, mode 5. In this problem, um, the amplitude of mode 5 is like this, because uh, let's focus on, on two flanges. Uh, mode 5, the two flanges uh, are approaching each other, are uh, getting closer. So, um, but um, in the eigenbuckling solution, um, uh, the two flanges are opening up and closing and opening up again. And it's corresponding uh, to the plot here. It's opening up and it's closing 
because here uh, it's positive uh, numbers, meaning that it's closing and it's opening up again. And uh, for mode um, 7, it's a um, um, local bucket mode. And uh, from the result file, you can see that the web is coming out and going in and coming out again and going in again. And the, the, the amplitude is getting smaller and smaller from uh, the support to uh, middle cross section. So here, uh, here is coming out because it's positive, and then um, it's going in and it's coming out again and it's going in again and the amplitude is getting smaller and smaller. So uh, the uh, the point here is the result uh, is making a uh, perfect sense, and also you can find the model uh, participation factors here, like uh, in this problem. Uh, the dominating mode is mode five. is uh, almost n almost um, ninety percent. So uh, it's probably safe to say that uh, this is mining uh, uh, distortional buckling mixed uh, of some amount of uh, local buckling, of course. And uh, there are other applications of model identification. Uh, for example, y if you can track. Um, uh, the displacement field of your specimen uh, using a uh, digital image correlation and uh, you use the, the data uh, properly and you can determine actually the failure mode of your uh, experiment that's pretty uh, good I would say and um, also you can um, by tracking the displacement field um, of your analysis or uh, experiment you can um, you can track the development of different uh, classes of um, buckling modes during uh, the collapse. For example, in, in this problem, and uh, this is uh, a work by uh, Professor Zhang Jieli, not by me, but uh, we we can do that as well by using a buckling cracker. Um, so uh, for this problem, at maximum uh, load. It's a mixture of um, distortional and local buckling, but at the failure point, it's mainly uh, just uh, exclusively uh, distortional. Um, eventually, the purpose here is to um, better understand uh, the interaction of um, the global distortional and local buckling modes uh, in thin wall structures, and uh, eventually, we hope that we can help we can help the development of standards. Um, and that's it. That's that's the introduction of Buckling Cracker, the software. Remember to visit uh, visit our uh, Facebook page, and I will provide uh, a, a a paper or something that you guys can uh, refer to. And um, um, thank you for listening. This is Junikai, and see you next time.